Hello again. Uh, so I made a um, couple of videos of, of, of some pretty Brute Magoo attempts to make a first landing on the moon. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's still, I need to rewatch through them to see if they're worth posting or if I curse or am too depressed during them. But about half of, uh, you know, half of the failures in getting there are design fi uh, mistakes and the other half are also design mistakes I didn't notice until later. Uh, like being slightly over the avionics limit on my last stage. Uh, so anyway, I figured I'd do a quick video of um, some chest testing out a couple mods because you know, we're all waiting for 1.1. 1 .1. uh, so I wanted to test out a couple of mods that I noticed have updated, um, and you know, everything will take a little bit of time to update at least uh, to 1.1. 1 .1. So I want to see kind of the pinnacle of things at the the end of this cycle. So Blue Dog Design Bureau is what I'm looking at uh, now, and it's this is in stock. I don't know if I've uh, posted a video in stock before. Stockish, right? Uh, anything I do is going to be stockish. Uh, but, you know, I've got the clouds and things, but so I'm aiming for the moon. So uh, something I really like about Blue D Dog Design Bureau are that it has some reproduction uh, hardware. So for instance, this is uh, the core that looks like, here, let me see, I've named it on the pad, uh, Juno 2 Pioneer 2. Uh, so if you're not sure what any of that is, so Juno 2 is a rocket like this, kind of like pretty, uh, pretty much like a redstone. Um, which is what they used to do the first um, shot out into space, but not into orbit back down, the first two American um, human spaceflight missions. Uh, it um, <clears throat> also is uh, Juno, I think it was straight called Juno 2. It was used to launch the Explorer, the first uh, satellite in orbit. So this is, uses a very similar uh, setup to that, uh, this uh, satellite. And the goal of this satellite, uh, despite this like tiny rocket, so it couldn't put a, a, a human into orbit, it uh, this rocket is also barely capable of putting us uh, like a couple kilogram satellite into orbit. Uh, yet they're going to try to put something into orbit with the moon with it. So uh, you'll see um, Blue Dog, it, it's it interestingly balanced. because Some of the probe uh, parts and stuff, they're like all the same mass, despite the fact that perhaps or arguably they shouldn't be. But it still works, surprisingly works okay for balance. Uh, so like all the probes are like 0.1 tons or 0 0.05 tons. Um, but this this works really well because you can I can show off like kind of a bunch of the major concepts that are important to launching uh, this mission. So let me just keep an eye on some of the numbers here. Okay, dynamic pressure is coming down. Oh, I'm getting a lot of atmospheric drag. So let's go straighter. Uh, you can't really do the same type of uh, what do you call it? Um, gravity turn, you know, gradually curving over in in stock. Uh, but I still really want to do gravity turns, even when I play in in stock or stockish. So I'm just angling down a bit. I'm really even not quite sure if I have far installed in this install. It's because some of the really like dorky shaped uh, parts in stock just don't work well at all with um, with far. Well, sometimes I'll play without even far on in stock, just because the stock atmosphere atmospheric system is good enough, you know, for. Uh, for stock play in a lot of cases, and yeah, the stock parts just don't allow you to make a sandly shaped rocket that will work well with FAR. Uh, anyway, so first step of this, just like when the Explorer uh, goes into orbit, this part doesn't uh, doesn't actually deliver the hardware to orbit. It delivers it to a suborbital uh, arc. So we're going to burn out pretty shortly here. So you can see we didn't make it into orbit, and that's the exact same uh, as as it was with the uh, ex uh, with the actual Pioneer two attempt, uh, so this is the same kind of cluster as is used in the <coughs> in the first uh, satellite orbit. Sorry, brain still asleep, but I'm going to assume the first satellite uh, for the U.S. was called Explorer one. Anyway, so and target the moon. So while we're still arc, if if these solid stages failed, we're just going to go back down in the atmosphere. So this is a suborbital, like a direct ascent type launch. Normally you'd put something in orbit of the Earth and then send it to the moon when you feel like it. But this, um, because of the capabilities of the first stage, it just couldn't put this cluster of solids into orbit. In reality as well as here, which is, again, why I really like Blue Dog design. It kind of uses these like stockish design aesthetic, um, you know, gets everything kind of sized so it can, uh, so it'll function. And yet you can really kind of play with these real world concepts. Okay, so interestingly, I need this number. So they're solid engines, so in reality, I would need to 
arc this so that the sum of all of these burns is the same as the sum of all of my solid rockets, because in reality you can't shut off solid rockets. So let's just get about there, 15, 3, 3, 3, okay. And then I want to do the burn while I'm up out in space, and I'm going to get into the moon sphere of influence, because I want to be as ideally as close to the moon as I can without hitting it for this to, uh, for this to function. Now, so in reality, this is you know, one slight difference, but not big. Um, some of the nose cone of that would have, would have been on here at this point uh, in order to orient it for the burn to the moon. And I don't recall offhand if it was spun up, so the thing with these, uh, if you've ever played with realism overhaul engines, is you know, the good ones will gimbal, so the engines will move around a little bit to keep you pointed in the direction you want to. So solid rockets, particularly tiny ones like this, just don't, they don't do that. You can't turn solid rockets off, you can't throttle them, uh, and they don't gimbal. Like These are just, this is just basically like a fire, a really efficient, really dangerous firework stick. And we've got a cluster of 11 of them. So this is like the cluster that was used to put Explorer into orbit. Except it's a heavier payload, I, I believe. <laughs> anyway, so we're aimed. Uh, it's so <laughs> the estimated burn time is 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 insane. So it looks like it's about three minutes in total of burn. Uh, so let's split the difference. So we want to start the burn about a minute and a half. So with stock mechanics, we can just use the you know, mystical magical reaction wheels to point us the way we want. Whereas in reality, they would have used the nose cone of that first stage to get everything oriented. And I think they would have spun it up too, uh, because of the um, because of the reaction wheel in this. I don't recall if they would have spun it up on the ground, probably. Like that's what they did with Explorer as well. This whole assembly was spinning when they got it up here, which is crazy. Um, anyway, so I can artificially spin it up. But I mean, it's just using the same reaction wheel as well. But this is what you would do to stabilize the burn of these solids, rather than if, if it starts to arc off a little bit in one direction, it'll just spin and spin and completely waste the energy. If you have it spinning like this, if it tries to wobble off a little bit to one side, it'll it'll be brought back by the by the rotational effect. And it's, a, it's a gyroscopic stabilization. Uh, you know, spinning spinning is a good thing in a case like this, and you can also use it for sounding rockets in you know, realism overhaul. So anyway, because we have the magic reaction wheel that like literally isn't even consuming measurable electricity, I'm just going to use that. Oh, do I have here? I can just cheat that off as well. Tons of unrealistic mechanics, but hey. So, so what did I say? Three minutes? Yeah, so about a minute and a half before uh, I can send it. So if this cluster had failed, like, um, I didn't refresh my brain on this actual, on the actual mission, but I'm pretty sure it didn't succeed. Uh, so there we go. So let's start burning these stages off. So this, you know, might get me into orbit. So if it succeeds, like, the whole goal of this is to actually put something, you know, no matter how small and incapable this little probe ends up being, uh, into the orbit of the moon. So let's see if we can achieve that or not. But if this stage succeeds, as you can see, uh, it does you know, put this hardware into orbit of the Earth, which isn't bad, right? Considering it's a pr pretty much the same kind of rocket design as was used for Explorer. Now that, I don't recall offhand if the first, if just the first stage of that would have got it into orbit or not in reality, but you know, close enough if it's only off, off by one minor concept. But then the rest of these, uh, stages are going to be enough to get us uh, onto a flyby of the moon. So now that isn't quite good enough, you know, Kyle, you say. That's, uh, that's not the goal. We do want to get into orbit of the moon. So I'll show you what's supposed to do that in a bit. Okay, so this stage is going to burn out. All right. And now I'll probably have to use a concept that, that isn't realistic, but hey, it's, it's stock enough. So you can shut down these uh, these solids. So once, uh, if only I had that new, uh, that new feature Scott Manley showed off where you can pin a window. I'm curious if you can pin a window and then uh, also see it out here. I probably should have action grouped it, but once I see that I'm close enough to the, to the moon, I'm going to shut down this solid. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you can't actually shut down a solid in reality, but something like this where it doesn't gimbal, you can't throttle it, like that's harsh enough by stock standards anyway. So I feel like this is a good balance to kind of teach people or give them the ability to kind of do this um, historic role play. Uh, okay, so we pop past the moon and shut down. So there we go. So yeah, within 56 kilometers, that's not a bad flyby at all, you say. All right. So now we're going to fly by the moon fairly close. 
Um, in reality, they would have had to set this up like precisely to know that you know, all of the delta v to, to get it to work right, um, all that delta v would have actually had to have been <laughs> exactly what they need to get a close flyby of the moon. Uh, so now we're down to just this. So these are little solids that actually generate you know, a good bit of energy there that are, in, uh, in theory, we're going to put us in orbit of the moon. So let's see what happens here. If we plan this maneuver, see that's actually going to crash us into the moon, so I get too close. So if that was my only choice, you know, this uh, mission would be a failure. But what you can actually do, uh, because there's all kinds of clever things you can do uh, when you have a fixed amount of solid fuel, because they're used to put things into geostationary orbit as well. So all kinds of clever tricks have been uh, devised. So one thing I could do is, okay, well obviously this still needs to add up to, oh, did I overshoot it? Uh, oh, I did. Okay, so this will actually do it just fine. But I'll still discuss the cool tricks you can use anyway. So let's say that this, this 283 as it's showing, yep, it's showing it the same in both views. All right. Uh, if that was enough to crash into the moon, so one thing I could do is to actually have this burn a little earlier or a little later. Uh, and that would, you know, that would kind of help balance it out. And another thing you can do is to, let's say, steal some of the energy from one, from one direction and add it to the other, right? And so that would allow me, so here now it would be more, and then I can reduce, no, other way around, uh, so I can reduce how much energy goes into this. So if I wanted to control if this was what was important to me, I could change the angle at which I burn. Uh, to change how much energy goes into slowing, just straight slowing me down into a lower orbit, or I can divert it into the radial or normal, in order to. Oh, and this is just this is just for mech jab. I suppose I didn't mention it, but you know, at some point I kind of have to hope or assume you've watched a, a video before too, or played with a couple of mods. But yeah, anyway, I do still want to provide good basic intro. So mech jab, maneuver node editor, and that's where I get to tweak with these numbers that directly shows up in the uh, the stock tool. So that's going to be good enough. Uh, good. So this is actually going to allow me so execute next node, <laughs> and the magic reaction wheel spins me around. Oh, actually, it might. Hmm. It might fail at this. We will see. Actually, I'm not going to let it. I'm going to let it get me there. Um, but one thing where MechJeb might fail with this is the these this engine kind of points backwards. Yeah. See, it looks like it's going to actually abort. It looks like this is actually going to burn forward because I need it to burn opposite of my direction of travel. So more like that. So let me try to mentally map. Okay, so this is kind of close to straight up except on this side. Um, so I want to be, the inverse of that is like here, let's say. All right, so now I'll wait until that. So unfortunately I can't switch to control by this, but this is how it was actually, if you look up a picture of Pioneer 2, the solids to slow it down were on the front side. But I can't tell to control or plan from the front side of it for that burn. Um, okay, getting there. Oh, and it's in the dark side. now. It, and in reality, you they probably wouldn't or couldn't have done this. I'm not quite sure. But by dark side, I mean we can't actually see the Earth. So they uh, yeah. Earth does not have line of sight communication with the craft here. Oh, and I should start it uh, now because Oh, that timing's so good. I'm slowing down. So now let me just get rid of this. You know, we did we did all the planning we could. Let us see how successfully this works or not. And I don't recall offhand if it would have been spinning at this point. You know, there's definitely a lot of real history you can look up. These these attempts are, were very interesting, very off the wall considering um, you know the kind of mission plans we use nowadays with all the new technology and learning we have from history, but. That's how they, uh, the Americans were hoping to put the fir their first object into the orbit of the moon. And uh, in my recollection, yeah, Pioneer 2, according to the wiki here, it says third stage failure, maximum altitude 1,550 kilometers, some data returned. So it looks like, so third stage would have been that second set of solids, the, uh, the set of three. So that failed to burn, so that means the set of 11 was enough to get it into, up into Earth orbit. Uh, and up to a you know some lower number by you know 1,550 um, uh, orbit, and there we go. We actually are achieving moon orbit here. So the Pioneer actually you know it got up into that suborbital trajectory, 
and then the first set of solids, the 11, fired successfully, but the three didn't. And so I don't think they made another attempt at that. They, they tried a number of other interesting designs. The Pioneer 3 is a cool one. Um, it's coded as a failure here, but you know, all the, uh, any of these early missions, you know, it's not just about success or failure. You know, it, the, the details of it are quite interesting. But there you go. So this is how you could get a tiny satellite into orbit of, this is moon in this case, but I kind of went through all of the real world mechanics that would be used in that. Uh, so, you know, I hope you found it uh, interesting. I figured it was a quick video I could do. Uh, Blue Dog Design Bureau is a really cool mod. Tons of, like, kind of historic-y looking parts. Um, the biggest complaint I've heard about it, and the thing that kind of weirds me out a little as well, is it because the Delta V requirements, you don't need very much energy to move around in this talky system. Um, so their solution, because, uh, yeah, they, that where they decide to tweak or, or cheat um, I don't think it's much of a cheat, is to just have smaller diameters of rockets, so just not as wide as the rockets in stock, and so therefore the fuel tanks have a smaller volume than most of the you know, stock fuel tanks. Uh, and some people find those numbers hard to remember, like the diameter of 0.93 something something and 0.62 something something. And after playing with them for, I, I saw that, and I agree with that to some extent, but after playing with it for, you know, half an hour or an hour, I started to you know, remember those diameters and kind of what the scale is. Uh, you can think of it like like wrenches, almost, you know, like what's you know, one six, three eighths, et cetera. It's just another scale you have to remember. Or even like fractions, because they are point something something, um, as long as you remember the, the leading decimal, like 0 0.6 and 0 0.9, da, 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 that should be sufficient for you to kind of remember them. But beyond that, you know, real, relatively uh, small complaint. It's a really cool mod. I highly recommend you check it out if you kind of want to fiddle with kind of historic-y looking probes and stuff, but you don't want to commit up to realism overhaul. Um, I recommend you play with it. There's still reaction wheels. Um, you could shut down the solids. You know, all kinds of little like stock-friendly. Uh, tweaks you can uh, you can use in uh, Blue Dog that makes it just a uh, uh, really enjoyable experience. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, at some point in the next few days, I'm going to watch my terrible, uh, embarrassing uh, moon landing uh, attempts uh, and possibly post them if I don't sound too ignorant or stupid in them. Because of course, in the end, I realized that it was my mistake that caused them to fail. Um, but during the video, I probably was not making that realization, so I feel like I probably sounded stupid, but I'll decide whether to post that. Uh, thanks for watching here. Goodbye.